Okay. Okay. Hey, how you all going? It's Joel, the Aussie Metal Guy with Crank.com and with that metal station. And today I'm getting to have a chat with legendary Halloween bassist Marcus Grosskop about the latest self-titled album, which is a bloody ripper. Drops June 18th. Marcus, thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> Thanks for the flowers. Yeah, hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very... Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, it must be it must be really uh, a great album. Not one only for having the three vocalists, but the the, the way you've done this, you know, with the Halloween United and everyone really wanting to see this. But the way you've kind of paid tribute to to Ingo as well, and using that the original drum kit and yeah. the recording being done with the same modulators at the same studios where Master of the Rings, The Time of the Oath, and Better Than Raw were done. Yeah, that 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 was a good move because we we were trying to transport a little bit of that Ingo uh, kind of vibe that we also had in the in on the last tour having Ingo playing together with Danny, which was fantastic. One of the most uh, emotional part of the last shows shows we did in the, on the last tour, we were thinking of how can we transport a little bit of that kind of feeling into the next studio recordings. And we knew this guy, he's he's still uh, owning that drum kit. And we we got that in the studio, in, in the studio where Ingo played the Masters of the Rings and the Time of the Oath. And, uh, well, uh, and well, well, a couple of records we did over there, right? Yeah. And also with the old analog machines and all that stuff, it, it gave us, I think it's a great idea, you know. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the songwriting process with the three vocalists? How, how did you, um, you know, how did you compose the vocal instrumentations, but the musical side of it all as well? It's first of all, it was all kind of normal when we. Do, uh, I mean, we had loads of ideas. We had like the luxury problem of having too many songs at all, you know, just because we have five songwriters in the band, which also gives you a big variety of songs and stuff like this but it's not going to be an easy process working like this but it's very interesting the creative part of it is you know you're ending up having uh, six people throwing ideas at you while you're playing something or while you're arranging something and you've got to try them out finding out what's the best idea but your head is kind of exploding you know it's an overload of ideas but it keeps your head clear <laughs> yeah way. it keeps your head working and it, it wasn't the easiest process, but but it was the most interesting process. And concerning the vocals, it was not clear from the beginning who's singing where, and who's singing with which part and what song. But and I was not involved into the decisions, you know, because we had to split up uh, using different studios after a while. After five weeks, we're jam jamming in the, into the studio because that coronavirus wouldn't allow us to go back into the studio with 10 people, including producers, engineers, and people like this, you know. So we were kind of forced to work in different studios where they probably made the decision uh, with the vocals amongst the singers and the producers, I guess. And so it was a real big surprise for me listening to the first mix when I heard what was going on, you know, and I was surprised in a very nice way. And I kind of love it. Yeah, it would have been a surreal experience making the, the the album like that as well, kind of not being all together, but, you know, having everyone together making an album again for the first time and like forever. And you've been there since day day one. So it must have been a, an extra special experience for you making that album and, you know, yeah. kind of. Rather, I think I think that's the essence of the album because it, it has a lot of energy from like the very very beginning it sounds very modern so we but you got all the halloween essence in in those songs which we used uh back in time so you got stuff like rem reminds you of the past a little but then it sounds like today you <clears throat> this is halloween at present with a with a new sound with a new costume and it tells it tells me there's a lot more to come as well. So it's also Halloween for the future because we had so many ideas telling us this is not the end of a line, you know. And yeah. it's a good, it represents Halloween in a very, very good way. That's why we kind of, and it's been a refreshment. It's been like a newborn. That's why we just decided to call it only Halloween, you know. It says it all.
Yeah, I was going to mention that. That would have been why you only went with that that name to to signal this beginning. And the creative juices would just be flowing with the three vocalists going and with all you guys going in there with the guitars and the bass. And it just must be really exciting going forward. And I know with coronavirus, you've probably been like every other band out there that have just been working overtime in their spare time that they have had to be locked at home. Yeah, well, it's it's like there's so many notes, so many parts, so many stuff. I'm still listening to it, finding new bits and pieces here and there. You know, it's just like a note changing, chasing. But that's what we did from the beginning on, right? And so, you know, you have you have all you have all this, you have all this Halloween stuff in there, from past, present, and in the, for the future. <laughs> Maybe yeah. there's even a second part from that Skyfall. Who knows? You know, that story can go on. But we didn't plan on it now, but it would be a great idea. <laughs> yeah, it would be. It's a great track. I was just sitting there with my daughter, like literally just before I jumped into this interview, watching that Skyfall track as well. Can, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about that track? It's it's been yeah the the story uh, is like the, the, this guy this uh, this alien guy is crashing down to Earth directly unluckily on, into the into the uh, area 51 which is like very very secretly hidden stuff going on there that nobody's supposed to know and they catch him they grab him they test make some tests with him and he doesn't really like it and then. Big Andy coming as a save, savior, uh, getting him out of the mess, trying to bring him back home. You know, I kind of like that story where we can be the heroes. <laughs> yeah, my daughter made the comment. She's like, the alien looks weird. And I was like, yeah, but we probably look weird to the alien, though. You know, it's a matter of perspective. <laughs> that's, um, it, that's it. Who's crazy, you know? Is it the guy who's crazy or does the crazy guy think we are not normal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Can we? Can you tell us a little bit about that um, second single, Fear of the Fallen? Fear of the Fallen is just like, we, we choose that track because it's like, it has all like this uh, Halloween stuff in there. And it's a quick hello, actually. There's another video coming with a real shooting. Well, it's, it's just like a lyric video, which which is done by the, by the two... Uh, Spain guys, very, very t- talented. They they also did, if you've seen parts of the last show or even been to one of our last show, the, the Pumpkins United show, you've seen the the movies on the screens and all that. Yep. that. That's been done by the same guys, you know, and they offered us that stuff and we said, wow, nice, why not? You know, it's cool stuff. Uh, it, it's good enough to bring it out, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I want to ask about mass pollution. Can you can we talk about that track a little? Yeah, I, I, I have to admit I'm not so familiar with the with the lyrics right now from no. each and every song. So mass pollution, I didn't went through the lyrics. I just know that it's one of those songs that goes directly straight forward, which is Andy's big talent to write songs like this, you know. And they go directly in in into your heart, into your head, and strict forward you know it doesn't need a lot of you know changes it doesn't need a lot of big parts it 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 speaks for itself so to say it's just one of his great direct into your face songs i like that a lot yeah it's got a great sound to it and you got um, some bonus tracks there for the people that are going to go buy the vinyl which is really good it must be great for you to see that the, the vinyl has really had a resurgence the la- resurgence the last 10 years i think you know um a lot of metalheads it's still quite a, a thing that metalheads want to have physical things you know merch vinyl records so it's as much as the streaming platforms are out there yeah. it's really good to see it's good to have those people because rock fans they like to have it they like they're like real collectors in a way right mm-hmm. and the vinyl is kind of coming back uh, a living a reunion right now since the last 10 years we sell more and more vinyl it's not the main market for us but i can tell there's like uh, it's uh, a couple of thousands more that you, every year you know i mean every release and it's getting bigger and bigger and there's like uh, uh, factories they doing they still doing or again starting doing vinyls which is very very cool i think you know it is but very that's cool what, what halloween is is kind of an old-fashioned band so why not 
bringing out an old fashioned item. <laughs> well, it creates a, a listening experience that people do forget sometimes. They get caught up in those streaming cycles, listen to a single, listening to a, um, a track here and there. But when you, you put on a record, you, you're going for that whole listening experience and listening to an album the way the band intended. You know, a lot of bands create a journey through their albums and the, the, yeah, the yeah. track track listings and the songs, and people do forget that. And when you're going back to that medium of the record, you're listening to the whole album still remaining connected flipping it over to the other side yeah yeah it's 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 been a big adventure you know we were hooking up with friends and one one has to turn on the record because the other one has been drunk like hell and he wouldn't touch a record player uh, anyway <laughs> so one's got to be as just slightly sober to turn on the, to turn around the record <laughs> Yeah, it was one of the things that I was quite happy to do in 2020 when Corona hit. Um, get a record player, not get drunk. I didn't do much of that. Not, not <laughs> but too I, much. Yeah, not too much. But I did get a record player and start building up a, a big vinyl collection because it, it's just a great way of listening to music. And I see that like even tape cassettes are starting to come back. Collectors are grabbing yeah. hold of their ones yeah. as well. Yeah. I, I saw that people people are are again listening to tapes, you know. <laughs> it's all coming back, you know. The long hair is coming back. Even the mullets, <laughs> even the mullets are coming back. That's probably one thing that shouldn't come back. <laughs> the, the what? The what? The mullets, where the, the the short on top and the long on the back. <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all coming back. I <laughs> know oh, it's, it's all coming back. It's like Spinal Tap is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> That's it in one. Um, are, are there any? I, I know it's pretty bad all over the place, but have you got any plans to 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 tour at all? Like probably. Yeah, made, we, have, we have yeah? quite big plans actually because the tour is booked, fully booked. But it was before, and we took the whole block, uh, uh, and then rebooking it for three times actually because you need to have this ven those venues once it's starting again because everybody's going out so we're taking the whole year and rebooking it you know and now we start we we replace it to april 22 and then hopefully going out till till the end of the year you know if oh. if, if if so god will but i hope numbers are sinking and you know, vaccination is hopefully working, doing a great job and all that will be passed and I mean, forgotten, hopefully in, in, in some months so we can go out play again, standing on the bars, sharing a nice cold run, having a big laugh again, you know, get the situation controllable. Yeah, exactly. And I'm thinking 2022 as well. I've seen a few shows like International starting to book shows over here, but I was thinking as well, like 2022 by then, all the vaccination plans and everyone will be all sorted. But that gives people time to go out and buy albums like chucking yeah, the yeah. pre-orders for the Halloween one, grab it, <laughs> crank it, know all the songs. So when you go there and you get to see Halloween live, you'll be able to sing along to all the tracks as well. Yeah, yeah. it's it's nice. They, they know it all from the pit then and also which i think is cool on rock and metal fans they, they, you can see it when you order tickets for venues in europe they're all keep the, the they're all keep keeping their tickets so that means they're waiting for the show to come you know you can see it on the numbers of it says some sometimes the those ordering platforms they say there's only 100 tickets left if you like to buy one hurry up and stuff like this you know or even sold out and this is like this for for a year now so that means they don't give back their tickets they keep it and they want to come you know that's cool that's cool that it's really i mean amazes me how they are really really patient waiting for it coming a year or one and one and a half year later which which i really really appreciate you know yeah, that's really great. I've seen a few people doing that and shows saying that. Keep your tickets because because it also keeps the promoters there going, yeah, we're going to be able to hold this show. The venue's being able to go, look, we've got this show. We can have it. We've got the tickets sold. And, and feel, builds confidence in the scene going forward as well for being able to hold yeah. these shows. And just for them being patient means that they can, that they get some nice and cool hammerfall as well with it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Are, are you? They're, they're not only playing for like a, for like a support act, like half an hour and then fuck off. It's just like they got some good one 
one hour, 15 minutes strong. And after you have some two hours Halloween, some two hours something. And that's, I think, a great value. Oh, that's amazing value. Hey, mate, I, I, I want to get to Europe for that. That, that would be unreal. <laughs> um, Marcus, um, do you have one track that you like, um, a track off the album? I know they're all pretty hard to pick, like the like uh, favourite yeah, song. Yeah, at, at the moment, I'm very much on Angels because it's it's kind of different from all the others. And I like the, I, like, I really love the atmosphere with that song in a way but that is for this week next week it will be a different song but at the moment i'm on angels <laughs> yeah I, I do that a lot with albums as well it always changes because you're listening to the whole album yeah. a lot and you're yeah. just like oh no i like this one that way you can next week it's another one um yeah. i'm gonna let you get about the rest of your interviews and what you have to do marcus do you have any last yeah. words shout outs or thank yous you'd like uh, to add in yeah, hoping thanks for your keeping keeping the faith in Halloween, not bringing back the tickets, waiting for us to come. I really, really found, find that a very, very emotional thing to us. And yeah, well, hopefully that will be over. We go back on tour, go back to normal, you know, sharing a nice cold beer and some bars, having like a normal life again. And, you know, that's it. I hope that is going to be soon. Yeah, so do I. I hope it's soon, and hopefully we can get you all over back down under for a show. That would be amazing to see this all tour. Right, all right. And hope to come to your place in Australia one day. We couldn't book really in advance because you're not allowed to go out. We're not to go, we're not allowed to go in. It's hard to book, but I know. You know, the time will come. Exactly, Marcus. Thank you very <laughs> much. You have a lovely day, and all I'll right, see you right. later, mate. Thank you, Thank thank you very you. much. Bye bye. Bye.